Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome back to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. Let's start off at Wisconsin International Speedway where Joe Valento raced on a Tuesday night in his pro truck driving for Kelly Byers and the KBR performance team. Joe qualified fifth, ran second for most of the race, but had trouble with the inside groove getting grip and lost a couple of positions late in the race, eventually bringing home a fourth place finish. Up next for Joe, Pro Trucks, this weekend at Jefferson Speedway. Anthony Alfredo brought home a fifth place finish at Michigan International Speedway in Sunday's Arca Menard Series race. Let's go straight to the driver for a post-race recap. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here, just wrapped up the ARCA race here in Michigan. It was a lot of fun. I really appreciate David Gillen and everyone at DGR Crosley, as well as Crosley Radio and Bola Masses for allowing me to come do this and giving me the opportunity. Uh, it was really fun to get the chance to hop in the ARCA series for only my third time and first time one of those cars in two years, so I enjoyed it. But uh, we worked really hard all day. The guys did an awesome job adjusting. We just never got... Uh, where we needed to be come the end of the race, but we had a top five finish and uh, pretty happy with that because uh, that's about uh, as far up we could get before it got strung out and uh, everyone just gets super, super far away from each other here and you kind of just ride around uh, unless there's a caution or something like that. So we did all we could to salvage as great a finish as possible and appreciate the hard work of everyone and as well as Richard Childress Racing and Chevrolet for allowing me to come do this, but hope everyone enjoyed the race and I look forward to hopefully doing it again sometime. Anthony will be back in the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Dover International Speedway on August 23rd. Jesse Love scores two top four finishes in the Arkham Menards West Series doubleheader weekend. At Evergreen Speedway, Jesse qualified third, then brought home a fourth place finish. He backed that up with a third place finish at Douglas County Speedway despite breaking a shock mount in qualifying that caused damage to the front of his Toyota. He drove from seventh to third in that event. Jesse maintains his points lead heading into round seven at Colorado National Speedway on August 22nd. But up next for Jesse, ASCS Sprint Week, six races in six days. Connor Mozak was back in the Cars Tour for round five at Dominion Raceway in his junior motorsports Chevrolet, this time sporting the number 88 for the 125 lap main event. Connor qualified 16th and ran mid-pack till lap 77 when he moved inside the top 10 and eventually finished in eighth. Up next for Connor, Cars Tour at Orange County Speedway on August 22nd. Newly signed race face driver Sam Butler posted two top three finishes at Hickory Motor Speedway on Saturday in the late model stock twin 40 lap features. In race one, Sam finished second behind race winner Josh Berry, and in race two, he was three wide at the finish line with Berry and Millington crossing the line in third. Up next for Sam, Myrtle Beach Speedway on August 15th. The sad news, this will probably be the last race at this historic racetrack that has been hosting events since 1958. Jake Bowman brought home a career best finish in second in the Junior Late Model Series at Madera Speedway in his number 71 Nate Clower prepared Chevrolet. Jake qualified fourth, but started on the front row due to the invert and led the first 16 laps before getting passed by race winner Bradley Erickson. Jake settled into second and stayed there for the remaining 54 laps, bringing home a second place finish. Up next for Jake, back to Madera Speedway on August 27th for round five of the Junior Late Model Series. Cassidy Hines was also at Madera Speedway for round four in the Junior Late Model Series in her Friends of Jacqueline Foundation Nate Clower Motorsports Chevrolet. Cassidy qualified eighth and ran in the top five for most of the race before getting caught up in an incident that sent her to the tail end of the lead cars, but she raced her way back to seventh place finish. Let's check in with Cassidy for a post-race update. Hey everyone, I raced at Madera Speedway this weekend in my 88 Junior Late model for Nate Clower Motorsports. I ended up qualifying eighth 
And then for the main, I raced my way up to fifth place for the halfway mark. And once the halfway mark was over, we ended up getting involved in a racing incident that sent me to the back. But I did end up racing back my way back up to a seventh place finish. So that was pretty good. I would like to thank all of the Nate Clark Motorsports guys for helping and Tony Caputo and Mike Nake especially. Thank you. A great run for Cassidy and only her fourth start. Up next for Cassidy, Pro Trucks at Colorado National Speedway this weekend. Joey East was back in the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series at Madera Speedway in his number 88 Nate Clower Richwood Mead Chevrolet. Joey qualified fifth, raced his way to fourth, but got caught up in an incident on lap six that caused some front end damage to the car and he had to restart 13. Joey cut a right tire down on lap 34 and from that point on, the car was just not the same, but still managed a seventh place finish. Up next for Joey, Nut Up Pro Late Models at Madera Speedway, August 22nd. Haley Constance was at Deming Speedway for a 600 micro sprint race and was fastest in practice, but Mother Nature won and the race was rained out. On Saturday, she returned to the Mountain Dew Junior Late Model Series at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval, where she qualified third, ran second in her heat race, and brought home a top five in fourth for the feature event. Gavin Graham was at 417 Southern Speedway at Punta Gorda, Florida in his pro truck where he qualified 11th out of 18 trucks. At the drop of the green flag, the young Lakeland, Florida driver started his way towards the front and worked his way into eighth before getting shoved into the wall on a restart. Gavin said the damage made the truck loose on entry then the engine started to overheat, so they pulled off, ending their night. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite Race Face Driver. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.